Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of whatever I feel like making here on Tabletop Roleplaying Gaze. Um, trying a new setup. I used to have my camera on a tripod thing over on this side, but um, now I'm trying to have it up on top of my computer and we're going to see how this works. Um, I don't really have a better option as of right now. Um, but what we're doing today is I've been painting a Reaper Bones Manticore for probably too long for the way it turned out. It was just a, I didn't get around to it. But, um, Reaper Bones has often pretty scenic and, and cool bases. The issue with this, though, is that if I want to use it in D&D, this is it, by the way. I don't know if it'll autofocus. It should... Might not, huh? Hmm? Hmm? You gonna work? There you go. See, I told you, it's it's not great. It really isn't. It's it's a mediocre paint job, at least for me. I could have done it better. There are things I would do differently, but it's good enough. As in. I'm not proud of it, and I don't like it, but that being said, I'm not going to deal with it anymore. It's just going to be done. But as you can see, it doesn't have a standard base. Now, that's what this video is about, is using this to make a base that will be suitable for using this in gameplay. And I will run through all of the individual steps of that. Give me a second, I'm scraping off some paint I got onto the bottom. There we go. Paint that's not supposed to be there. There is paint that is supposed to be here, but that paint's not. But, um, basically I'm going to show you my process of doing this. Now, basic summarization is I'm going to look at the monster manual, which is on my bed back there. Um, look through the monster manual, then figure out what size it is, then you have to look up what size base a monster of this size would have so that you know like the circle is the right size. Then you take a compass, draw the circle. Um, you can also just have plastic mini bases. I don't have any like extra ones because I don't. I just my local game store doesn't sell any. At least not that I've noticed, and I don't feel like asking them to order some because I can do this just fine. And um, you could make false bricks out of air dry clay or polymer clay or like paper mache clay or XPS foam. But all I'm gonna do is take this, put it on a cardboard circle the right size, trace around it, um, and then base it as normal, and then prime that all give it the same general paint job as these rocks, glue it down, add some like Spanish moss and reindeer moss just to give it a little bit more life, and then that'll be it. So yeah, and I'll be working on that while um, tonight's episode of Critical Role runs, and I'll just intermittently do what I have now named the tilt is just a very slow, gentle pan down to my desk because I figured that this is the best way I can paint. The only issue is that it's not a good way to show you, like, over my shoulder what and how I'm doing. So I need to figure out a way to do it because this is a good way to watch me paint, but you can't really see what I'm doing. You can see the movements, but you can't really see what's happening. So this will work fine for like doing bases and stuff but I need to find a better solution like jerry rigging my mic stand that's just holding my headphones right now into like being able to get it like down here in front of my face and like there but then it's in the way of the mini when I'm trying to paint it so it's a process uh, we'll see I'll ask other people how they do it Maybe I should just take it on a tripod and set it right in front of me and I'd like have it in front, like between me and my arms, if that makes sense, on the table. But yeah, 
new formats. We're trying stuff out. That's what this is going to be. So I'll start that basic process and then I'll get back to you. See you in a bit. Alrighty, so if you check in the monster manual, a manticore is classified as a large creature. So I also got out a pre-painted mini of a clay golem, which is also classified as a large mini. So here's where we run into issues. <laughs> the um the manticore's cool stylistic base is already bigger than the large base that it's supposed to have. That's not too, too big of a deal because as long as we know it occupies um, four five foot squares or four inch long squares, it's not that big of a deal. So like this guy takes up that much space, so like two inches, two inches, and then two, 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 two inches. So we know that it occupies that much space, and it fits within those like that two inch by two inch um, square area. So that's not too big of a deal. The issue arises in getting this and making sure it fits that. So the way I'm going to get around this is I have a compass and I'm just going to measure the thing between. Well, the distance between the two points. The very end. So that's about an inch. Now I want to take it to a little bit bigger because I have hopes that that will make it still fit within the general allotted space while allowing enough room to not be a problem. So if I put this guy here, you can see it's already clearly bigger. But if we put the manticore in, we have a little bit of clearance on all sides. Now if we go to the middle point, which is easy to find because it has like a little divot, we measure across, it's a little bit bigger than two inches. It's like two and a quarter. It doesn't exactly fit in our allotted space. And here's where we get to do something we don't, well, I don't do personally too very often, which is say, that's fine. It's fine that it's not perfect. It's fine that it doesn't work great. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out as nicely, nicely, as nicely and neatly as I possibly can to retain a very nice circular shape and I'm going to position the manticore on this uh, circle and trace around it. And then from there, we can take other bits and pieces like sand and rocks and moss and static grass tufts, which I don't have. That was just a listing. Um, and we can attach those where this mini does not go. So that way we can prime the base um, afterwards so that way we can like I'm trying to figure out if we trace around it we can take this glue down bits where we need them to go but not put them where this bottom part needs to go prime it paint it put glue down nestle this sucker in there and then we're done now to avoid having to do all of this you could put the base down first. That would be a great idea. What I should have done is made a circle base like this um, because the manticore and the base were separate. Multiple arms were different pieces. The wings were different pieces. Um, so like the torso, the wings, 
and um, this leg, this leg, and this leg. So actually, maybe the back two legs were on there. Regardless, they were separate from this. Now, if I was smart about this, I would have done the base initially, but I would have needed to paint it with a brush because they don't recommend uh, spray primers for the Reaper Bones materials because they get tacky and weird. But what I can do is, you know, work with what I've got, which was a few mistakes, but all in all, it really doesn't detract from it. It just makes it take a little bit more work. So yeah, I'm going to go do that. I've been talking for a while now and um, yeah, my rocks, well, not my rocks, um, my sand uh, needs to dry because I keep it in a container outside as to not take room in my, up room in my room. The issue is, is that it rains a lot. Our porch roof caved in a little bit. It got soaked. So it's just drying on the side. So yeah, I'm going to cut this out, trace that, get a good guesstimate as to how I want placement fill in the gaps with sand later on once it's dry, prime it, and then I'll go through the painting with you, I guess, and then the adding of all the flock, not flocking, I don't have any of that, adding of like the moss and stuff to make it more natural and all that jazz, so yeah. I hate how it keeps doing that, boom, boom that thing right there. Eh, we'll figure it out. Thank you for joining me. And I will be right back. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome back. So, um, the base is... Why does it keep doing that autofocus thing? Come on. Um, well, it's, it's set up. Ah. I, w I wish I had recorded a couple the stages of it to show to you. But, you can see that it nestles in here nicely. It's not painted yet, but it is primed. But basically what I did is I just took that space, I traced out around it, and then I put down rocks of varying sizes. I have my little Chinese takeout box that I divided up with different sizes of rocks. And then I filled in um, the rest with just construction sand and PVA glue and then I tried my best to cement it down with super glue but for some reason my super glue is really really thick it's usually really watery so it it was more of like a gel consistency it was like half cured but not actually so what I ended up having to do was after waiting a couple hours for it to dry nothing was happening so I had to <clears throat> go through with um, baking soda and just cure everything and then dust it off and I could reprime but it's not going to be that big of a deal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through with um, I'm no, I don't feel like wasting mini paints so I'm going to go through with uh, folk art uh, black acrylic and uh, apple barrel white we're going to mix them to make obviously a gray try to get as close to the gray base tone that I used for this and then once I get to that point I'll chuck a black wash over it like I did with the base then I'll dry brush it until it looks sort of similar and then we'll add I mean I'm, I might add some browns here and there um, for the sand but that being said I think it works better as like gravelly bits of rubble so we'll see how I feel about it once I get to that point, and then we'll glue down the manticore, and then we'll use some reindeer moss and some Spanish moss to create some nice vines, and probably use some brat blah, 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 um, brown acrylic paint to do some like weathering where mud would sit and all that jazz, maybe some greens in there. But yeah, that's where we're at. I will be back in a little bit. Hello, um, I just got back from, uh, just, 
painting it a little bit darker than my primer gray if it'll focus but um then I went over everything but like that center part where it's going to be covered by the um the other parts with a black wash and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through each and every bit with progressively lighter in color and lighter in application dry brushes or well, dry brushing and then I'm going to glue on the manticore and then to unify everything and add a little bit more warmth back to the piece before we add on foliage I'm going to do a very light tan um, light in both application and color um, tan is dry brushing to bring a little bit more warmth and unification back to the piece but yeah, so I'm going to do that, and then I'll be back with the result. See you in a little bit. Alrighty, so here is the manticore seated on the additional base. Now, yeah, you can see where the original base started, but overall, it's, it's pretty uniform. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a light tan dry brush, like I said, over everything to unify it and make everything a little bit more cohesive in general colors. And then once we do that, I'm going to go through and um, add the like little vines and stuff. So yeah, I'll be right back with that. Alrighty, so I don't know how well this camera will pick it up because it refuses to autofocus ever. Ooh, just dropped my paintbrush, oh well. Refuses to pick it up and focus ever. But we do have a unifying tan dry brush across the whole base. And now I'm going to go through with maybe some light green dry brushes, probably some brown and stuff just to add a little bit more interest and color. And then once that's done, I will start adding the little moss and vines and bits and bobs. So, yeah that's where we're at currently and I will be right back with an update alrighty so still trying to figure out how to get all this to focus the right way because can't even really see what's going on because it won't focus but what I've done is I went through with very 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 watered down green paint and speckled it around and I took Agrax Earthshade which is a brown wash from Venus Workshop, and dabbed it around, not everywhere, just little creases, just to add a little bit more definition and bring some more variance in color back to the piece. Now, what we're gonna do is I have some Spanish moss. Uh, you can buy it like this. You can also, depending on where you live, just find it naturally. That being said, um, the stuff that you buy is typically grown, whereas the stuff that you find is for, you know, animals to use in, like, nests and for habitats and all that jazz. So I would not recommend um, finding your own, unless, of course, you do so uh, conservatively like with conservation and preservation in mind. I also have reindeer moss. Now this is in a plastic tin with a paper towel because the humidity where I am is awful and being in an airtight container with um, the paper towel allows it to not get nearly as disgusting because it'll get slimy and you'll it'll stain things green like the inside of this 
and overall is just generally not a hazard. What's the word? Hassle. There we go. So we have both of these things. Obviously, we're not going to use all of all of them on this mini because that would be incredibly excessive. What I am going to do, however, is try to find bits that look like vine and bits that I think will fit in the general um, not style but in the general region and look of where this base is supposed to be and what it is supposed to be and plan accordingly. Now I have been having issues again with my glue so I have to do this the off away which is use one of the glue uh, super glue pens and just squirt it out and dip things in it and hope that it works. I also have a shitty brush that I have been using for applying extra glue to do so. Again, do a brush that you don't care about or use a brush that you will soon be fine with not caring about because it won't treat your brushes nicely that is for certain now you'll also often find that these bits are way too big also find that sometimes they are dyed green the reindeer moss which lo can look okay but doesn't always so you definitely want to dry them off to some degree and try to get any excess bits. Uh, reindeer moss grows in a very, very, very tangled fashion, as does Spanish moss. But I'm just trying to find a piece of this that will nicely and neatly uh, work in the creases of this. The issue that I'm finding at this current moment is that reindeer moss, again, if, especially if it's dyed, is incredibly, incredibly green. So I'm just going to use a damp paper towel and I don't, it's not even showing up for you guys because of how washed out my lights are, but it is completely staining this entire uh, paper towel but now they're dry and a little toned down in the brightness department because I'm just trying to find something that will work as a vine in the crease that we've got going right about here now we could also just do something like this Ow, an ant just bit my foot. That wasn't pleasant. There are ants all over the place where I am, and they like to bite. Here we go. We've got a nice, thin piece that will work the way I want it to. So we're just gonna slap some of that down there. Let that dry and adhere Ooh. we're gonna take my terrible paintbrush that I don't care about use it to apply some glue to apply this bit over here with smear some glue there try not to glue your fingers to your mini I'm sure you can imagine that that's not pleasant, but as I can see, and now you can see, you can start creeping stuff around, adding some dry, spindly bits, um, and get some general composition going on. Um, the one thing that I will uh, warn against is using too much. Because you might get to a point where you're like, ah, yes, this looks good. Let's use more. Don't. 
if if you're debating whether or not to use more either get a second opinion or assume that the answer is no it doesn't need more because more often than not um, the decision that will be reached usually after application was that yeah no this doesn't look right and it's always better to put stuff on and be like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Versus, like, you can always put more on. But you can't really take stuff off too great. So I would definitely recommend uh, thinking it through a, a solid bit. But yeah, I'm going to continue with this. And then I'll be back with the final result. And that will be that for this video on how to make a like custom base for a bones model. Alrighty, let's try this again. So I just recorded the outro bit and all of the reveal of this. And I had my mic still muted. I do have to get ready to go to work soon. So I don't know if I'll have time to seal this. But this is the finished product. I've tried autofocusing it by bringing it ridiculously close, but it's still, despite everything, focusing anywhere else but the mini. So I will post a better picture on the Twitter, which the link will be in the description, and I will be, you know, have this as the thumbnail. But this has been how to make a pudding base or reaper's bone reaper bones like scenic mini and make it you know gameplay usable and albeit significantly cooler at least in my opinion so yeah here we have it uh my name is charlotte thank you for joining me for yet again another video here on tabletop role playing gaze and I am, ooh, gotta get my button to stop recording. There we go. Signing off. See you all next time.